In a previous video, I showed that the Apple Watch Series 6 appears to be a pretty great oxygen saturation tracker. However, how about the new Apple Watch Series 7? Is that any good? That's what we'll explore in this video. First, I'll briefly introduce what SpO2 or oxygen saturation is and why you might want to measure it. After that, we'll look at the performance of the Apple Watch 7 at ground level, followed by two tests I did in a low oxygen environment. We'll close things off by comparing the performance of the Apple Watch Series 6 to that of the Apple Watch Series 7, which surprisingly showed quite different results. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now my channel is not so much about listing features, instead on my channel I try to test the accuracy of different measurements and today we'll dive into the oxygen saturation or in other words SpO2 measurements of the Apple Watch Series 7. Now before getting to the test results, what is oxygen saturation and why would you want to measure it? In really simple terms, it's the percentage of red blood cells in the bloodstream that contain oxygen and in general this percentage should not be too low. In reality things are a bit more complicated since it's actually a molecule inside the red blood cell called hemoglobin that binds the oxygen and it cannot just bind one but in total four oxygen molecules. Hemoglobin is essential for transferring oxygen from the lungs to all your organs and tissues. The cells in those organs use that oxygen when they generate energy which is why oxygen is vital for humans. As a byproduct, your cells produce carbon dioxide, also called CO2, which hemoglobin then transports back to the lungs. Given the importance of oxygen, you generally do not want a too low oxygen saturation. However, certain medical conditions will cause low oxygen saturation. This is the reason why more and more smartwatches include an oxygen saturation sensor, because it can help detect or track those diseases. Examples of these medical conditions include, for instance, one, sleep apnea, where you can basically stop breathing for 30 seconds or more during sleep, two, lung diseases like COPD, where people have breathing difficulties, and three, respiratory infections such as COVID-19. In all these cases, your blood oxygen saturation can potentially drop to anywhere from the low 90 to 60%. And as I mentioned before, normal ranges on the other hand are roughly between 95 and 100%. Now there are two main ways that you can measure your oxygen saturation at home. The Apple Watch Series 7 uses what is called reflectance pulse oximetry, basically shining light on your skin and measuring the reflected light. Now more conventional SpO2 monitors use the more established transmittance pulse oximetry, which shines light at one side of your finger and measures what comes through on the other side. In general, this last transmittance pulse oximetry is considered more accurate and is used in hospitals around the world. However, this is not practical for use with a smartwatch, which is why these use reflectance pulse oximetry. Now enough background, let's take a look at the tests of the Apple Watch Series 7. The first thing we want to check is to see if the Apple Watch ever detects any low SpO2 values when it's not supposed to. To check that, for several weeks I measured my SpO2 levels in both the morning and the evening using the Apple Watch Series 7. Now given that I'm generally a healthy individual and I'm taking these measurements at ground level, they should not drop below 95%. Additionally, to make sure that I do not actually have a low SpO2 value for some unknown reason, I also measured my SpO2 using a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. In total, I took 155 match measurements with both the Apple Watch Series 7 and the finger pulse oximeter, and those results are displayed here. Along the vertical axis is the SpO2 level, with on the left the measurements taken with the Apple Watch Series 7, and on the right the measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. Each dot is a single measurement, with the red bar indicating the average value for the Apple Watch, and the blue bar indicating the average value for the finger pulse oximeter. First of all, we see that almost all of the measurements taken with the Apple Watch are in my normal range, meaning 95% or higher. Now, this is a really good indication, showing that the Apple Watch does not easily give false positive low values. Furthermore, most of my values appear to be 97% or higher, so my personal normal range. Now, this is a bit difficult to see here, so let's look at a different type of plot. Here we see the same data, but now plotted as a histogram. We can indeed see that the values in red, which refer to the measurements of the Apple Watch, tend to be a bit lower than those of the dedicated finger pulse oximeter plotted here in blue. However, both are almost always in the normal healthy range, so 95% or higher, which is a good thing. And even better, both are generally 97% or higher, which is my personal normal range. So these first results indicate that the Apple Watch 7 will not detect low values when it's not supposed to, and this is a good thing. This means it will not easily falsely notify me as having a low oxygen saturation when I actually have a normal oxygen saturation. However, is it able to detect a low oxygen saturation when it is supposed to? To see if the Apple Watch can detect a low oxygen saturation, I measured my oxygen saturation while flying. 
in-flight the pressure in the airplane cabin is decreased, thereby leading to a lower concentration of oxygen in the air, which in turn lowers the amount of oxygen in my blood. You might have noticed you sometimes feel slightly queasy when you're flying and a low SpO2 might actually be one of the reasons, as I discussed in a previous video. I own a total of three different SpO2 monitors and based on that previous video I made about how your oxygen saturation drops while you're flying, I found that the SpO2 sensor I used in the previous testing was most reliable. It could clearly detect changes even in my normal range of SpO2 values. And that's also what we can see during the airplane flight depicted here. In pink here I display the values measured by my finger pulse oximeter during the flight. As we were taxiing my SpO2 values were normal. Then as the plane ascended my SpO2 values dropped and they stayed low during the flight itself. Then as the plane descended my SpO2 values went back to normal and stayed normal after that. We can now display the measurements taken by the Apple Watch Series 7 in this same graph and I did that here in green. And as you can see the values measured by the Apple Watch indeed tend to be lower during the flight right here compared to the values measured while taxiing. However it also detected some quite high values during the flight as you can see right here. And also whilst taxiing before takeoff and after landing the values do tend to be on the lower side. We can put that in even better perspective by adding the Apple Watch's measurements at ground level that we previously looked at and I plotted those here in red. Indeed we see that the measurements in flight tend to be lower than or at least on the low side of the measurements taken by the Apple Watch at ground level. However the measurements taken before and after the flight also tended to be on the lower side as you can see right here. Luckily I did a second test during another flight for which the measurements with the finger pulse oximeter are displayed here. There is a bit more missing data here, but we can still clearly see the normal SpO2 values before takeoff, then the values decreasing as the plane was ascending, then here should be the low SpO2 values, and my SpO2 values increased again as the plane descended, ending up with normal levels right here. If we now plot the values of the Apple Watch in here in green, we indeed see low values during the flight, as is depicted in this area of the plot. And we can see right here that before takeoff, three out of the four measurements were at a normal level. And we can visualize those differences between the measurements in flight and those at ground level more clearly by adding those measurements I took at ground level at home. And indeed we can see that almost all the measurements taken during the flight are lower than the values measured at ground level. Based on all this data it seems to me that the Apple Watch 7 is performing okay, though not as great as we previously saw for the Apple Watch Series 6. In pink again are the values measured with a finger pulse oximeter and in green those measured by the Apple Watch Series 6. However, before discussing those results, if this video is proving interesting to you, a sub to the channel and a like or a comment on this video would be amazing. Now back to the results. Indeed we can see here that for the Apple Watch Series 6 the measurements overlap super well between the Apple Watch and the finger pulse oximeter and you can super clearly see that the values were much lower in flight and then increased as the plane descended again and went back to normal levels. The SpO2 values measured at ground level with the Apple Watch Series 6, which are depicted on the left here in red, are again also mostly in my normal range of values, similar to what we saw for the Series 7. However, the measurements taken in flight with the Apple Watch Series 6 on the right here show much more consistent contrast between the low values in flight that are increasing and getting back to normal levels compared to those of the Apple Watch Series 7, which were a bit more noisy. Just to remind you, these were the results for the first flight with the Apple Watch Series 7, and we can indeed see there's less consistency in the values measured both in flight and while taxiing, making the contrast less stark and more noisy. So does this mean that the Apple Watch Series 6 is better at detecting your SpO2 levels than the Apple Watch Series 7? Well, I'm not sure. They should have the exact same sensor, so in principle they should not behave differently. It could potentially be that some of the internals of the new Apple Watch 7 got changed or shifted around, somehow causing interference. Apple could also have changed something in the firmware. Or it could be that there's some variation from unit to unit in production quality when it comes to the sensors. However, of course my sample size is rather small and it could be that the Apple Watch Series 6 just happens to do well on that particular flight and that the Apple Watch Series 7 by chance did worse during the flights I tested it on. However, there are a few things we can say with more certainty based on the data I collected. First of all, the Apple Watch Series 7 does not seem to easily detect false positive low values on me. So if I do get a low value, I should not dismiss that out of hand. However, on the flip side, we also saw it does not always detect a low value when it is supposed to detect it. Therefore, I would recommend taking a few measurements over a period of a few minutes if you suspect there's something wrong with your SpO2 levels. Of course, even if that happens, there's no need to panic. However, it could be an indication you might want to get checked out by a doctor. 
By the way, this week I started a YouTube Shorts channel where I will share early results of my testing before showing them on this main channel. I for instance just finished the first short overview video where I ranked the best and the worst heart rate trackers. If you want to see the results of my testing as soon as possible, consider subscribing to that channel which is linked up here. You'll see there that the Apple Watch Series 7 but also the Apple Watch SE are amongst the best heart rate trackers out there. Now I hope this video informed you about the SPO2 tracking capabilities of the Apple Watch Series 7. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.